Moto is one of the easiest classes to start in Torchlight Infinite. If you want, you never actually have to change off of a main skill you're given right when you start the game. Machine Guards. Though, if you'd rather go Spider Tanks, it's a perfectly viable option. And while this class is really easy to get started with, a lot of people found it a bit more difficult to min-max. They felt like the damage and the defenses fell off. And that's something that I noticed as well when I first played the build during the closed beta tests. Well, mostly that I noticed my defenses were falling off, not so much that my damage was. I had plenty of damage to kill things, however, if I got hit by a boss, it wasn't going to be a good time. Sure, I was res capped, and I didn't honestly have all that much going on aside of res cap. So going into this, I knew there were a few things I wanted to change from my previous builds. First off, I was going to use the Decayed Mind, as that felt like an easier way to scale damage than Machine Lord, thus more beginner friendly. Second, I needed to have better defenses than before. And third of all, I wanted to have enough damage to at least take down Path of a Brave 5 and Tier 8 Traveler. I didn't care about Uber Keegan, because that's not really anything I'm interested in. Did I succeed? Well, you're watching my Tier 8 Traveler kill right now, and personally, I would say it was one of the smoothest I've ever done. Moto has a huge advantage in that you don't get attacked most of the time when you're fighting stuff. Your minions do. And that makes dodging far easier. Couple that with a few of the defenses I'll be talking about later, and you're in for a pretty good time. The reason I decided to use Decayed Mind is, unlike the Machine Lord which kind of forces you into a Spirit Magic setup, this allows me to go pure Machine Guards. So all of my scaling is much simpler because it's really difficult to scale both Machine Guards and also Spirit Magus, or Machine Guards and Spider Tank. For more info on that, be sure to check out my Machine Guard vs Spider Tank video, which will be in the card and the description below. And as a result of the easier scaling, I could put more into my defenses. Ultimately, I went with a low life build. Since life plus shield seemed pretty awkward, and ultimately if I had a big enough health pool and I wasn't taking hits frequently, I wouldn't have to worry too much about my recovery. But a little bit more about that when I get into items. The end result was a build that's quite good at bossing, very good at mapping since machine guards clear really well, and decent enough to do Path of a Brave 5. Can it do Uber Keegan? I don't know. I never tried because I don't enjoy the fight, though I kind of suspect that it would be able to whip a little bit of practice. So how did I put this character together? Let's start with my skill and item choices. Unsurprisingly, my main skill is Summon Machine Guard, because I wanted big punchy golems. Since I'm always going to have low-life minions, but my minions can never die, Bloodthirsty Slaughter is a great way to add damage. Mechanical Modification means I have half as many, but they're not only larger, and therefore better targets, or at least that's what I tell myself, they do 123% additional damage, which is a significant multiplier. Multi-Strike definitely feels worth keeping, it adds an incredible burst of damage when they're able to stand still and hit stuff. Steamroll I'm using on one of the machine guards, since I wanted a little bit of extra clear and the quality of life. It might not be the highest damage, I could instead go crit multi, but I liked it for the wave clear. And passivation support, unfortunately the text here isn't great, it doesn't quite tell you everything it does, I'm going to assume that it deals more damage the lower an enemy's life is. Usually bosses are more dangerous when they're low life, so I'd rather have it than not. Though I didn't do extensive testing here, it, it could honestly be that this should be crit damage. Ultimately, when my testing was inconclusive, I just went with what everyone else was doing and assumed everyone else isn't doing it wrong, right? For my other machine guard, the only difference is mark, because I need some source of mark somewhere, and this way I don't have the attack speed penalty, so they're a little bit more responsive. For my buffs, I went back and forth on what to have quite a lot. I'm using Machine Army, since Machine Army gives attack, cast, and move speed, making your minions very, very fast. You get one stack of buff for each minion you have. If you have eight, and keep in mind I have nine, then you get a lot of stacks of minion attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed. In terms of extended duration versus increased cooldown, I have a lot of increased cooldown elsewhere, so I went with extended duration. If you have a lot of duration elsewhere, you'd want increased cooldown instead and then Dark Gate so that I can pull my minions to me. I think technically for damage, it's actually a little bit better to have a curse here, but I like the quality of life, and ultimately my build has all the damage it needs, so I'd rather go quality of life. Which is also why I went Blink. Initially, I was trying Leap Attack with Harden, but I found I never had Harden when I needed it, and I always had it when I didn't need it. 
I'm not going to die just running through maps anyway, so I'd rather have something that I can use to position more precisely on bosses and not worry about a harden that's going to bait me into feeling like I'm tankier than I actually am. Where things get a little bit complicated are my auras. First up, Precise Weapon Amplification, Erosion Enhancement, and Fearless. These are all linked to Selfless. In other words, these auras are for my minions and do not apply to me. Next up, I have Precise Energy Fortress, Magical Source, Restrain, and Selfishness. These auras do apply to me, and only me. The minions don't need more shields, since they can't die anyway, and they certainly don't need mana regen. The reason I have these specific auras for the minions are because this is what scales their damage. They're melee attackers. So, I want something that scales weapon damage, and I want something that scales melee damage. Due to the decayed mind, they deal erosion damage, therefore I have an aura that scales erosion damage. The reason I put this on myself is the minions don't really benefit from it, and I wanted more defenses. And then finally, I have Precise Auto Defense with Protection Field. This causes minions to take a portion of the damage that I otherwise would have taken, which is quite nice given that they can't die, so that damage is effectively deleted. In addition, I'm running Precise Elemental Resistances to cap my res and Precise Steadfast for a little bit of armor for extra tankiness. And that's my skill setup. Next up, let's start looking at the gear. The first item is the most important, Decayed Mind. This converts normally 50, with the Ember mod 100% of minion physical damage to erosion damage. This is how my minions are dealing pure erosion damage, completely bypassing enemy armor. And I get 20% of physical added as erosion for minions. The reason I'm using only one of these is I don't benefit from the additional max synthetic troop quantity, and I instead wanted my other ring slot for Embrace of Eternal Sleep. This is an incredibly powerful defensive item, that basically means you will never die to small hits. If a hit is smaller than 8% of my maximum shield, I'm simply not going to die to it. I'd have to take 6 plus a second before I even start taking noticeable damage. Additionally, it has 15% max ES, 20% defense, which is essentially 20% ES and armor, a shield regain, which doesn't apply here, and a lower energy shield charge interval, so when I do take damage, my shield charges up much faster, or starts charging faster anyway. The other important item is the Warhorn, because it has plus 3 to max machine guards. This is the only way to increase the maximum total number of synthetic troops that you have. All other things, such as the modifier on Decayed Mind that says max synthetic troop minion quantity, this is up to the hard cap of 6. Warhorn alone allows you to surpass that, normally getting 8, but with the Ember mod going up to 9. So I consider it best in slot for this build since I already can't scale Spirit Magis effectively, assuming that I'm going to use Machine Guards. Finally, because these are crit-enabled minions, the last piece of the core items is the Fiend Crown. I happen to have one with minions gain lucky on crit strike, corroded for a 100 minion crit strike rating. Really, any Fiend Crown will do, and this is a relatively common item due to the existence of a memory fragment for it, so it probably wouldn't be super difficult to get even relatively early in a season. Before I move on to talk about my other two legendaries, I want to talk about my rares, because I'm not using a two-handed weapon. This is because I found the DPS gain from isomorphic arms really didn't outweigh the survivability loss as a result of using a two-handed weapon. Like I said before, it felt like I was just baiting myself by going leap attack with Harden. It was never really up when I wanted it to be. So instead, I have the Bard's Wand with cooldown recovery so that I can have perfect overload uptime. Plus, it has really useful stats like minion double damage, and effectively plus 4 minion skill level. Then I have a shield with plus 2 minion skill level, a bunch of shield, and some aura effect. Since I'm running so many auras, this is an incredibly effective stat. Similarly, my boots have plus 1 minion skill level, 35% move speed, and own an additional stack of agility blessing. This is just to run faster. It's absolutely not necessary, but I happened to hit it really quickly when I was trying to hit the cooldown recovery, so I kept it anyway and as much shield as I could viably get on the item. Note, this build's really starved for erosion res, so do try to get erosion res on every rare. And then for the gloves, it really is just about getting as much shield as possible with the plus one spell skill gems. These suffixes aren't quite as important, though if you're using spider tanks, you would want something like attack speed. Now, finally, the last two legendary items are optional. I am using Origin of Winter, corroded with own two additional focus blessing stacks to get as much minion damage as possible, 
Each focus blessing I have is 6% additional minion damage, and this stacks up pretty high when you have 6 of them. An ideal version would be this corrosion plus so that the minions also gain focus blessings, though I didn't find any up for sale, so I guess I'll have to make do with this. And finally, for the chess piece, I'm going with Endless Fortress. This offers a significant amount of minion damage when minions are on low life, which keep in mind they always will be, and it offers a decent amount of defenses with some cold and lightning res, and quite a large chunk of shield. This gives you almost as much energy shield as you'd get from a really well-crafted rare. Ideally, I'd want to convert the arcane over into ward for even more shield, or I'd want to get this mod corroded so that it's 40-45% to minion damage when minions have low life. Though, this build really wasn't struggling for damage at any point, so it's just kind of bragging rights at that point rather than a meaningful difference. And the all-round effect of this is, I'm pretty darn tanky. I have 5.6k shield, about 700 unreserved life, my resists are mostly capped, and erosion is at least acceptable. Can I die from standing in something really dumb? Yes, but I'm not likely to die while mapping, and on bosses it's pretty easy to dodge what I need to avoid. That said, if you don't feel like you need the damage, and you want to be really tanky instead, there is an alternative setup. That is, using a Corrupted Bulwark in combination with an Infinity. On the Infinity, you'll want Erosion Res and the Ember version of Poison Immunity. Normally, Poison Immunity causes you to take 25% of Physical and Elemental as Erosion, and gives you 5% max Erosion Res, for a total of 80% Erosion Res. The Corroded mod causes you to take 50% total of your Physical and Elemental damage as Erosion. This means you have an 80% reduction on 50% of the damage you take, which is most impactful when taking Fizz damage, since you'd already have a 75 or 76% reduction on Elemental damage. Using this setup, I get nearly 8,000 shield, however, it ultimately didn't seem to make a difference in whether I died or not because I didn't really die. Now, if you're worse at dodging stuff, this might make a meaningful impact for you, but for me personally, it ultimately wasn't worth it. Now, in terms of hero traits, at tier 32 I have all in. Because I have a lot of cooldown effect, I'm constantly going to be spamming overload, and if I'm constantly going to be spamming overload, then I want to have the bonus overload effect. By the time it decays a little bit, the cooldown will be up and I'll be able to refresh it. At level 62, you absolutely want Last Stand, because minions won't be defeated when they have Overload. This means your minions are immortal, you can lower their life as much as you want, and cause them to do even more damage. At tier 80, ultimately I opted for Rest and Ready, since they'd get 35% additional attack and cast speed which scales really well with Machine Army, and the 40% overload duration means it's just a little easier to keep up if I'm not paying full attention. Though, technically you can do go for broke instead if you need to fix their crit strike rating, I found I had enough crit regardless. Now, moving on to talents, this is where the build's going to diverge the most from a lot of the builds that use summon spider tanks and spirit magus. I start off with God of Machines, the basic core for any minion build. I'm picking up Shrink Back since I don't really need orders, sure, extra damage is nice, but I'd rather have a barrier for when I do take damage. And of course, I'm getting Mighty Guard, since as I mentioned earlier, Isomorphic Arms was not a damage gain for me. The most important talent to keep in mind here is this one right here for 25% minion aggressiveness, because it makes the minions feel so much better to play than not having it. When minions have low aggressiveness, they tend to just derp around and not really attack enemies, this way they'll always be sticking to a boss that you want to kill. For the rest of the talents, early on I prioritized personal defenses, but later on I didn't worry too much about personal defenses and just kind of clicked minion damage nodes. One other important note, these barrier absorption nodes are kind of nice, but not very important, I'd take them last, I think those were my 90-94 to 94 talents. So don't try to grab them early on when you're first filling out God of Machines. Next up, I am using Machinist, and again, this would normally be Alchemist if I was using Spirit Magus. And going through, most of these things should be relatively straightforward. You want to get things like Energy Shield since you are a shield build, you want to get all the minion stats that you can, and you don't really want to worry about the bottom track since it only applies to sentries. I did need one floating point, so I grabbed a little bit of extra barrier absorption. For the large talent nodes, I started with Boss. Since that makes it really easy to permanently sustain minions, though for bossing I do switch over to Broken Shell, because I don't need to worry about sustaining my minions now that my overload cooldown is so low, and this way I know my barrier will always take one hit from a boss, even if that hit is absolutely massive. 
For if you have a talent, burning aggression, since I didn't really feel like I needed the extra defenses from kinetic conversion. And the minion aggressiveness feels really, really good. Now, on the other hand, if you feel like overall your damage is totally fine, your minion aggressiveness is totally fine, you're keeping up with you no problem, you want some extra defenses for a boss fight, absolutely swap over to kinetic conversion. Just make sure your minions aren't wandering off and not hitting the boss like they're supposed to be. And then finally, I fully committed to the Warlock tree. This is to gain access to Merciless, so I have a massive amount of cooldown reduction for my overload. And of course, off a beaten track is good regardless of any build. Not only does it lower support skills mana multiplier, but it gives plus three support skill level, which is really a lot of damage when it adds up across every support on your entire build. In terms of specific talents, one to call out is the skill duration, since this means that everything is up for a little bit longer. Of course, you want the max energy charges. This gives your activation skills two charges, which feels great. And down here, I'm grabbing a little bit of extra elemental resistance just to make sure I'm capped. Though, depending on how much aura effect you have and how many resists you have on gear, you might not actually need these nodes. It's really much more about utility than absolutely necessary. Normally in games, I'm not really a big minion fan, because I find them to be a little bit too passive, a little bit too boring, or just frankly have terrible AI. However, if you have pretty high minion aggressiveness, the playstyle is a lot more active in Torchlight Infinite, since... Since you don't just summon minions and forget about them, you're actively managing your overload. So I've played minions a couple times now, and had fun both times. Which means there's a very good chance that there will be a Moto Machine Lord, probably Spider Tank and Spirit Magus build, sometime in the future. If that sounds interesting to you, then be sure to get subscribed, and while you're down there, leave a like. On the other hand, if this build is of interest to you, a lot of the legendaries that I used aren't super rare. Even with the basic uncroated versions of these items, it's more than capable of clearing T7, and honestly, really good at clearing T8 as well. Though, if you're missing the ring, I might opt for something a little bit more defensive in terms of either my belt or my chest piece. The reason I went for double damage is I ended up being pretty good at dodging. What I wanted to focus on with this build wasn't just the damage, since damage is honestly pretty easy to solve in Torchlight Infinite. Instead, I also wanted to focus on the quality of life having the build feel good to play, and having enough defenses to survive my mistakes. And ultimately, I'm really happy with the end result. It feels great to play, and I'm sure it'd be even better if I ended up tinkering with it a bit more. But I'm able to do all the content that I want to at this point, so I'm pretty happy with the end results. But what about you? What have your experiences been playing minions in Torchlight Infinite? And have you learned anything from this video? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And of course, before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. Or you can support completely for free just by leaving a like on the video and letting me know if you want to see a Machine Lord version down in the comments. And that's all for this video, though if you want to know more, I suggest watching my Should You Play Spider Tank or Machine Guard vid, which again will be up in the card or down in the description below.